Okay, since I just got my airplane back from Avionics Place, got it into my hangar. Um, this is what I had installed this time around. Uh, the Garmin G5s. One's an attitude indicator. I had the GAD29 and the GAD13 installed. The GAD13 gives you outside air temperature, true airspeed, winds aloft. Um, it's really nice if you're doing an instrument approach, it'll tell you which direction the winds are coming. If it's coming from the side at what speed, this angle, this angle, you know, so you can uh, judge your approach more accurately. This is the HSI portion of it and uh, works very well. Um, I'm going to get out there and do some demo flights with it, get used to it, and maybe I'll try to do some recordings. The uh, bottom one here, which is nice about this, is these they both have independent batteries. I think they give you about four hours or so of battery life, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look that up. And if the, this one would fail, this one here would revert automatically. So say this one here failed just now, this one would switch back over automatically as an independent attitude indicator. It's a really nice safety feature. So if you had to go partial panel, it, it would help immensely over the conventional vacuum operated attitude indicator that slowly rolls over. Um, and then the DG. A lot of people uh, were, were commenting a while back saying that IFD 540, IFD series, Avidine units, GPSs, um, FMSs, didn't work very well with the Garmin G5s, with the autopilots. Uh, this is an S-Tech 30 autopilot, and I am not having any problem at all. I can put an entire flight plan in, do put a approach in, and the GPSs here, we'll go back to, to HSI here. So when you're flying along, the GPS, so now this is flying here and it communicates with my S-Tech 30 autopilot. Um, and it'll fly the whole approach. It'll put you into the holds, it'll do the mist. So I have no issues with it at all. I did also, ooh, probably about seven years ago, I installed the new uh, PMA 7000 or new at that time. Audio panel, love it, just love it. And that's when CD players were a thing. I still use a CD player, I make CDs for this. Um, the new headsets today, you can pipe in, you know, through Bluetooth, but I, I like my CD. You can control it all through here, listen to your music, enjoy the flight. Never took out the WX8, this thing works like a charm. Uh, never a problem. It's. Uh, it's, it's a nice, uh, when you're IFR, it's nice to have some other type of weather on board. This will show weather too, the free ADS-B weather. I mean, uh, it works with the ADS-B conjunction with it. But I also, in the back, which I'll show you in a minute, I have XM weather that I use. So I use both to compare. It's always good to have backups. Not a nice little place to mount my keyboard here, but I can remove it so I can sit back. And anything that I do here, I can control my IFD 540. Really nice feature. Uh, really nice and bump. So if you're flying along, you're getting jogging around, you got a good hold of this, and you could do all your flight planning, amend your flight plan, whatever you need to do to control the IFD 540. Uh, the IFD 540 is also hand. You can touch it by hand and hit your frequencies and change it. But in the bumps, it's a little difficult sometimes, you know, you're jittering around trying to hit this and trying to hit the keys. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little much sometimes and, and really good bumps. So the keyboard comes into play real nice. Plus this also has soft keys to control everything. I ended up installing a fuel flow unit, FT450, Insight G1 since I'm a carbureted engine. It needs something any more fancier than that. It'll give you cylinder head temps and each exhaust temperature. It's great for leaning. I installed the Avidine 340 transponder. That's ADS-B out. I installed the MLB 100 in a tail, which is ADS-B in, so I can get traffic on this unit here. A lot of years ago, probably in the late 90s, I put Aeromizer's electric trim for the tail. So you push the button, the trim wheel moves. 
very, very nice. Um, it's really nice. It's it, boonies. Once you get really close to your cruising altitude, you just can sit here and just tweak it because it moves at very little bits. When I did do the interior, I had all the plastic covered in ultra leather. Very sharp, even the ceiling, everything. Excuse my tissue up there. Somebody was trying to block the breeze coming on them. Nice accent colors. Works with the interior really well. Nice carpeting. There's my XM weather I was telling you about. I just toss it in a baggage area. Works off of Wi-Fi, goes to the iPad. Uh, works really nice. Baggage area, hat rack. Everything's covered in ultra leather. Even the baggage door. Even this, except the lower portions. Right there. Nice cup holders. Mounted one on the door here. Boop. Nice when you're in flight. And I am also mounted one down here. Between the seats. So, in a typical cruise flight in my 70C, this is about the typical positions of the seats when I'm flying and for my wife. But you can see there's, there's room down here. There's plenty of room. I can put my seat back a little bit and I can barely, I can sit back, I can't even touch the front of the, uh, the back of the front seat there. Oh, I just did. But plenty of room. It's not uncomfortable as many, most people say. You do want to load the guys up in the front first, the, the pilot and the co-pilot, or your wife or your girlfriend, and then have the people get into the back seat. A little bit easier. And in and out. And it's not hard to get in and out. I push the seat forward, grab this, step right up. Not, not a problem. And you can see how much room is back there. It's really not that bad. I wouldn't want to put somebody back there for eight hours, but for a two hour, three hour flight, it is not bad at all. This, this moves, I, I made that a little center, center console to put stuff in. It's nice because I can put it in between the seats there when I'm by myself and have an armrest. Get the uh, Mooney. I was doing a trip with my father one time and I seen this Mooney taxing by a Mooney. And I said, oh my gosh, dad, what is that? I was young. He goes, that's a Mooney. I'm like, that is so cool. Look at the tail. He goes, yeah, stay away from it and stay with the uh, Piper for a while. And I continued the trip, took my dad down to Florida, came back, said I sold my Archer. He goes, stay away from the Mooney right now. Okay, dad. Called him up about a month later, said, dad, I bought an airplane. He said, you bought the Mooney, didn't you? I'm like, yep. And I still have it today. Why didn't I upgrade? The value, the performance, it's phenomenal. It's got the 0360, the light combing, uh, 152 knots, true airspeed, 7,000, with the work I've done to it. Uh, I could do that at the nine and a half, nine gallons an hour, nine and a half. I could slow down to 120 and go down to seven and a half. Uh, can't beat it. So my typical flights, three to 500 miles, it's perfect. The paint's holding up very nice, it's beautiful. Um, I had the bladders installed in my tanks, you probably can't see them, but uh, it's usually a wet wing, it means it's just aluminum and they seal all the ribs with fuel sealant and that's your gas tank. I got tired of leaks, I got uh, I always thought if you had to have a gear up landing, I'd rather have my fuel contained on a rubber cell. Left gear. Put some stripes on the cowling to jazz that up a little bit. Uh, 
I put them on the wings here. And coming down, you can see it on the ends of the wings. Looks pretty cool. Up the tail and on the elevator tips. I put the hinge covers on right here. That's a little speed mod. Comet strobe on here on the tail. More uh, rod end bearings. All the rod ends on the control surfaces have been done. Bungees down in there. Always taken apart and lubed up. Most people don't even do that. So this is my 1970 Mooney M20C. I had it since 95. Here's my 0360. 180 horse. Powerful exhaust. Um, I love it. I added the Tannis heater. Um, it has to go on into the tube because I've got the engine monitor connected to each cylinder. So I get just cylinder heads. This gives me my Tannis heat. And then I got my exhaust temperature probe so I can adjust my mixture on the analyzer. My Tannis plug-in I have to end up reaching up here to plug it in. There was no easy spot to actually put it. Uh, hoses were all done. Oil cooler was all done when I did the engine. Go to the other side here. Here's the right side. You can see it's just as clean. Paint's just starting to flake off the tubes. I'm going to have to address that. Next thing you'll pull those out and repaint those. Firewall's perfect. This has been all cleaned up and adjusted. I had the AD done on the engine mount to put the gussets in to prevent it from cracking because that's exactly what happened. It did crack. When I pulled the engine, I noticed that was cracked. Well, that's the main reason why I pulled the engine. And I only had like hundred or so hours before the engine was going to need overhauled so I just had to overhaul the engine at the same time I'm like why take it out put it back in in a year or two so that's that my next upgrade I think will be a lightweight alternator and a lightweight starter get some of that weight off the nose since I added my prop that added weight or you can see no more vacuum pump Vacuum pump used to be from here, put out back here. That controlled your uh, attitude and directional gyro. No more. Vacuum's gone, and I'm happy about it. 70 M20C, you got to see it all.